This book has been on me for a long, long time. I spent the years 1981 to 1990 in Nigeria. I spent many years in the ancient city of Ibadan. And Ibadan is a huge town. Uh, about 50% uh, Christian, about 50% Muslim, and everybody, everybody practices Ifa. Okay? Getting ready for the uh, wedding, an interesting thing happens among the women, uh, among certain groups of Yoruba, where they learn bridal poetry. Now, this bridal poetry is probably some of the most, if you were just listening to it out of context, some of the most um, obscene poetry that you can imagine. Because they use that device, the women, as they are talking together, to, to instruct the woman about the duties of marriage, about the duties of having children, uh, about what it means to be a good wife and mother, what they should look for in a man, and all of that. And it's a, a communal thing, as a lot of things with, among the Yoruba are. Yes, they are directing their attention to the woman, the marriage, uh, the woman who's getting married, the bride, but they're also instructing everybody listening. So there is a ritual bath also that follows where the idea is to cleanse away the vestiges of the past life, of the life up to that point, and to renew the woman to take on the new life as a wife and mother. And so, Ojo Igbeyaw is the title of the, the chapter, and I'm going to read a passage from it uh, to set it up. It's early in the morning. And the bride party, there is the bride who is named Cassandra Oyo. Uh, there is uh, the senior woman, the senior woman who is conducting the ceremony, who is Ezi Oshun. There are two of the bride's friends. Uh, and there is the hero Shango's sister. And they're all going down to the river to participate in this ritual bathing. So I will begin. It was two hours before dawn. The lone wagon followed the side road, which veered sharply off the market road down to the banks of the Ela River. The driver, Simon Oshosi, cast his experienced <clears throat> eye along the banks, looking for the private spot he had found earlier in the week among the coastal swamps and marshes, hidden from prying eyes. He carried precious cargo in his way. His brother's woman, Emma Aja, at his side on the buckboard, and Ezi Oshun, Cassandra Oya, Aida, and Beryl Dupe, the appointed mother of the bride, the bride, and the bridesmaids, huddled together in blankets in the chilly morning air. Simon Ochozi was charged by Maggie Eshu to find and convey these women to a place suitable for the ritual bath. He had trapped and fished the Ella River since coming to Ori, and setting up his new lodgings in Ori's forest, he was beginning to know it well. It was a fine day for a wedding, he thought, searching the pre-dawn skies for his sentry eagles. <clears throat> he could barely make them out, circling above, but their thoughts were his thoughts, and their eyes better than his own. They knew as soon as he that he had reached his destination. He pulled in on the reins and brought the wagon to a halt. There was an outcropping of rock that concealed a portion of the river about 200 paces from the road. Ladies, he says, I will lead you to those rocks, but you will have to climb down to the river by yourselves. There's a safe passageway between the rocks that I will show you, and it is an easy climb, but you must still be careful. I do not wish to take a message back to Mistress Maggie that one of you was injured while in my care. 
He helped them down from the wagon and led them to the rocks. He lit a candle lantern for each woman and handed it to her. Each lantern was fashioned from beaten copper and had a removable glass panel on each of the four sides and held a six-inch candle. Another one of Tom O'Boone's touches, he thought. Thank you, spirit of the tracker, for bringing us here and protecting our privacy, as the ocean whispered to him, favoring him with one of her prettiest smiles before descending down to the river. It was like a light shining in darkness. Do not worry, she said over her shoulder. I am at home here in the river. He watched to see if they were having trouble descending. Satisfied that they were having no trouble getting down to the riverbank, he set up a perimeter around the spot along which he would stand watch. If he wanted to spy on them, he could easily see them through the eyes of his sentries. But the hunter had no such need. He was their steadfast guardian in these darkest hours before dawn. The outcropping of rock extended like a gnarled finger bent at the knuckle out into the river, creating several eddies. An eddy is a swirling of river water and the reverse current created when the water flows past an obstacle, in this case, the outcropping rock. The moving current creates a space devoid of downstream flowing water on the downstream side of the rock. Water behind the rock flows into the void, creating a whirlpool on each edge of the rock, followed by a short reverse flow of the current behind the rock flowing upstream. As the Oshun led the women down, down the rock, they would bathe Cassandra Oya in a little natural alcove between the rock and the riverbank, fed by the swirling waters of the eddy. She checked her supplies in a bag, tied to her waist. <clears throat> there was the essential black soap, made from roasted plantain skins, cocoa pod, palm kernel oil, coconut oil, palm oil, and salt. She learned how to make this soap initially from Maggie Eshu when she apprenticed under her as a healer. Since her merging, though, with the Orisha Oshun, her memories reveal that she herself passed on the making and the use of this soap to humankind. She recalled the refinements she had made to the process and the variations of the soap that were her inventions alone. She used it topically to relieve acne, oily skin, and clear blemishes and skin irritations. She used it herself to maintain her beautiful skin for regular bathing and washing her hair. She had several sponges supplied by Meva Yemoja, who had purchased them from ocean-going fishermen. She also had a large jar of shea butter, a solid fatty oil made from the nuts of the kariti nut tree, as well as a jar of palm oil and a package of salt. She spent time searching her bag more to ready herself and to consult her memories than for any other reason. She knew what was in the bag. She knew what she had to do. 